real quick before we dive into this episode of the podcast. Be sure to grab your free PDF copies of my latest books at frugal.show forward slash free. Now on to the show. Welcome to the Frugalpreneur podcast. I am your host, Sarah St. John. This episode is what I refer to as a showcase episode where I feature a bootstrapped entrepreneur and they briefly share their tips, tricks, tactics, techniques, and tools that help them bootstrap their business and the successes and failures along the way. My hope is that each of these showcase episodes will provide at least one valuable takeaway that you can implement right away in your own bootstrap business journey. Now on to the episode. I got started as an entrepreneur when I was 12 years old. That was my first and only two job. After that, I started helping around my parents' family farm and doing some marketing there. Right after high school, I did not have a chance to go to college. So I started an ad to do desktop publishing work for a local real estate company. And that was in the mid nineties and hey, someone suggested I look into building websites. So I didn't have a clue how to do that, but bought a book, teach yourself HTML in 14 days, taught myself web design and sold a website to that real estate company. It was one of the first in the area. And then from there, I continued to build websites and, and teach myself digital marketing kind of at the dawn of the internet. And I also worked in residential real estate sales a long time as well, kind of piecing the two together. When I started my business, I was really only 20 years old. So bootstrapping was really the only option because I did not have much of anything. I had a computer for the family computer. I was still living at home and I had made some money like many teenagers, some side jobs, mowing lawns and plowing snow, that sort of thing. I really just needed to buy a book. Really. I bought a book to teach myself how to build websites. Back then there was no online training and Google or YouTube, but now there was Google, but it was quite young. And it was a self taught between that and viewing source was another option. You could look at any website source code. And that was a great way to learn for me. This was still the age of dial up internet as well. So it was a lot of trial and error and experiment, but that's how I got started. Just putting in the time, teaching myself new skills, and then world started spreading to help, help grow that. I think my biggest success in bootstrapping my little business is the fact that here we are 25 years later, I'm still doing this. This has not required any loans or uh, outside investment. And I've been able to make a living for 25 plus years from that very beginning. And there's been some tough times and it's certainly been up and down. That's been tough to handle, but I think the fact that I'm still doing it is probably a testament to success. As far as failures go, I think I did not realize when I was starting out at 20 years old, what the market potential was here. The internet was quite new and, and I was young and my cost of living was low. So I, I was just taking on enough work to pay my bills, which at the time were quite minimal. So I think if there was any regret or failure, it would have been to go back then and, and go after more market share, try to grow this as a, as a bigger business. And maybe that's not what I would have wanted, but I think I, nobody ever suggested that to me and I did not have the knowledge to think bigger. That would have been perhaps a big opportunity there at the dawn of the internet. My advice to anyone bootstrapping or starting out is embrace the failure. We, I think are conditioned to think that the word failure is, is a bad thing, something to avoid. But failing forward is really just learning from things that didn't work out. So if we are taking calculated risks and bets that aren't going to take us out of the game, doing things legally and not running out of money, then that's how we learn. And the matter that we can embrace that and the faster we can go, the faster forward we can move to success. Something else that I learned through my journey was having goals and, and writing those goals down. It's silly as it seems, I had not been introduced to the simple concept of goal setting. And it helped me a lot to think of where I wanted to be. Where are you now? Where would you like to be? What does that gap look like? And maybe that's money, maybe it's time, maybe it's lifestyle, but that simple act of, of writing goals down and, and you get bonus points if you share those goals with others because that helps us stay accountable. But even if you don't, even if you're writing those down and keeping those, at least you 
gone through that process. And I think it's very hard to move forward without having a plan as to where it is you'd like to be. Now, things change and that's okay, but having some direction, some goals of where you want to work toward, I think is really helpful. I'm an avid reader. I try to read as much as I can. And I find a lot of knowledge still in, in books. And luckily now there's so much information out there between written books, eBooks, videos, and other forms of media where you can find the answers to almost anything and they're out there. It really comes down to what it is you need, where you're at, what that gap looks like. I think anybody who is considering or is self-employed, it's tough. It's very hard. I, I, I don't know what it's like to be deemed fully employed because I hadn't had a steady paycheck since I was 12 years old. So I guess for me, I guess cursed and maybe fortunate to have not had that experience because I can imagine making that jump both mentally and financially is hard. It can be paralyzing. And I think now's a great time to do it. Start with a side hustle, part-time gig, something that you can do to maybe mitigate that risk and sort of dip your toe in the side hustle freelance side of, but I think my best advice is is just jump in the pool. It's going to be messy. It's going to have some growth. It's going to be hard. And the older I get, I find it harder to push myself sometimes. So I think you're not going to find a better time than right now to take that step forward. If that's truly what you want to do and embrace the fact that it's going to be a little uncomfortable, a little messy, and there'll definitely be some, some forces. If I can help anyone with anything regarding the marketing, building a website, digital marketing, SEO, social media, there's a lot to unpack there. And there's a lot of noise out there as to what it is. Like I said earlier, having a goal about where you want to be will sort of help define what tools in the digital marketing arsenal make the most sense for you. So I'm more than happy to have that conversation, be a resource for anyone, maybe shorten that learning curve a little if I can. I hope you enjoyed that episode and were able to take away a valuable nugget of information that you can implement right away in your own business. If you feel your story would be valuable for the listeners of this show, please visit Frugal dot show forward slash guest. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't already, don't forget to grab your free PDF copies of my latest books at frugal.show forward slash free. Until next time.